for your throne this morning, Baba Lord. We lift who we are, we, we leave it behind. We leave all that we are behind. We bow, we bow. Oh, oh, oh. 
King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you this morning. Oh, from our hearts to your ears this morning, oh God. We give you reference, we adore you. Oh, we surrender, we bow to you, oh God. Oh, you are the God of all flesh. You are the God of all spirits. Oh, you are the ancient of days. The one who was and who is and who is to come. Oh, the one that is more than enough for us. The one that is more than able. Our sufficiency is in you and we acknowledge that, oh God. God of our strength. God of our life. Our everything we worship you. The Lord of glory we worship you. Oh, my God. We adore you this morning. We're not in a hurry to leave your presence. No. Oh, my gosh. We've come to acknowledge you as a force behind our lives. Oh, my gosh. Our everything, the center of our lives. Oh, we worship you. Hey, my gosh. From our hearts to your ears this morning, oh God. From our hearts to your ears. We're leaving nothing behind. We're giving it all to you. Oh, my Oh, beautiful Savior, we love you, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord, 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 we We love you. We love you. We thank you. Oh, we acknowledge you this morning. We acknowledge you this morning. Father, we acknowledge you this morning. Father, we acknowledge you this morning.
Thank you. 
worship you, Holy Lover of our soul. We worship you from the depth of our hearts, oh God. We say you are worthy. You are worthy of all praise and all worship, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for life. We thank you, Lord, for protection. We thank you, Lord, for honoring our steps, oh God. We worship you, oh God, because you are holy. We lift up holy hands unto you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness. We say we will never let you go because your promises are yea and amen and you never fail. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We exalt it, O oh God. Forevermore. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. May we continue to keep our eyes on Him. Praise the Lord. May we continue to keep our eyes on Him. Praise the Lord. You're welcome to church this morning. This is Life Center Bible Church. And do, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, can you just wave to us? Wave to us. Praise the Lord. Can you be upstanding, Mama? Can you stand up? Life Center, can we welcome Mama? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we have our divine empowerment and communion service 
every first Sundays of the month. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we meet here every for our midweek services on Wednesdays from 6.30 p.m. until 8. And then um, on Tuesdays we meet at Mom Monica's house for uh, our home cell at Alex from 6 p.m. until 7. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then we meet uh, every alternate Friday for our prayer meetings. The next one is this coming Friday, 1st of November. Praise God from 6.30 p.m. until 8. And then every Saturday morning, we meet from uh, 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Then every last Sunday of the month, we have our Jean Sunday. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think the media team are in the shift atmosphere. We've already shifted. Praise the Lord. So here's our banking details displayed on the screen. Um, so please, I want to encourage us to continue paying, paying our tithes and our pledges. And that is the account details um, displayed on the screen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we be upstanding? Okay. Can we welcome Pastor Dumia Degelu? Praise the Lord with a loud ovation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I, I was just trying to think of an opportunity to, to share this with the church. So, and then the opportunity came up. I will share with us, but at the same time, I want to let us into a little secret. Yeah. About something that is happening next week Sunday. Who has any idea what it is? No leadership member. Nobody in the leadership. What is happening next week Sunday? Yes, I'm not saying it. I'm happy. Anyone can guess. What is happening next week Sunday? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Next week Sunday is Reverend Mrs. 50th. <laughs> is not enough. We need to start fasting from today. We need to start appreciating her from today. Can we all rise on our feet? Behind every successful man is a strong and Hallelujah. So we'll be celebrating her in the service next week, Sunday. Yes. Yes. It will be a Thanksgiving service in her honor. That is what she asked for. So all we sisters, you must come in your head here. She told us yesterday yes. in your duke. Yes. She said she wants to take pictures. She will call a cake, it will be look as glamorous yes. as possible. Hey, Amen. Amen. We are not calling cutting uh, calling colors or cutting corners. We want to celebrate her yes. big time. Yes. Amen. 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 And also comes with gifts. Because the Bible says that we should share in good things yes. with them that teach us. Hallelujah. Amen. And she has been a teacher in the Yes. We have all benefited from her. Yes. In fact, I was thinking yesterday that how can you appreciate her? Because she's been taking care of my children right from the first one to Tony. Tony took his first steps in Pastor's house. Pastor was just telling us yesterday. She will back them. I think she even backed Tomuwa more than I did. She will put him on her back, running around. When he's crying, when, when others are not playing with him, he runs to her. Hallelujah. Yes. She has been a mother. A mother of all mothers. Yes. So once again, now we appreciate you yes. today. Yes. So next yeah. week we will now it will be the grand finale. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We can have our six glorious things God's presence. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, I I I got a, a an email from Kenneth Copeland Ministries sometime this week, and the title of the first thing that I saw on that email was. 
can God trust you with wealth? And I was like, yo, that is a big question. Yes. That is a really big question. Can God really trust you with his wealth? I, I, as God allows me, I will try and print a copy of that thing and then give to as many of us that are interested. Because it really shows how you can be a good stewardship in terms of wealth. We all have heard about the parable of the servants that he gave five talents, two talents, and one talent. The one that was given five talents went out, traded with it, doubled it, and came back with it. The one that was given two went out, traded with it, and came back with double portion. The one that was given one, maybe he felt it was too small, because I was trying to rationalize exactly what was the thinking. But he came and told his master, I know that you are the one that wants to reap where you have not sown. What about the one that he gave you? Do you think you deserve it? Do you think it's because of your doing or because of how good you are that he gave you? It's not because of what any one of us has done. But it's all because of what Jesus did. So when I saw that question, I was like, hmm. some of us, the moment you, you, you hear 2020 in your account, even if there are no debit orders, you're already thinking of that dress, that shoe, you are thinking of going to Fuccini through words, and if it is so much, you think of how do preview shoes and all the clacks and all the words. How many of us remember God? How many of us place God in that level of importance that moment money comes into your account, the first thing you think about is paying your tithes and your profits? Some of us, some of us, tithes is always the last thing after every bill has been paid which shouldn't be the case. I actually heard the testimony of someone who what he does is when he receives his income, he, he removes his tithe and prays on the remaining 90%. That God, I pray that you give me wisdom to spend this, to pay my bills and do everything. And that money was always more than enough to the point that he started paying a tithe of 40%. Because God kept blessing him. How many of us put God first when it comes to our finances? Can God really trust you with wealth? Can God trust you with wealth, my brother? Can God trust you with wealth, my sister? Are you known for your generosity? Do you give to him? Do you give to people in the church? Because some of us, we, eh, what do I translate this? Um, think they say in Yoruba, Adan Tamadano. Ah, okay. People who are known to be good outside, but in the house, they are not good. They are not good to the people of their own household, but they are good to people outside. outside. Is that what you are known to be? Stingy to your own people and generous outside. This is our household. We are members of the household of faith. The Bible says that we should do good, especially to those of the household of faith. God is our father here. You and I have brothers and sisters. The moment I start seeing you as someone that I is needy. I don't need to attend to this one. Some of us, we want to do things for others to see. When the Bible even says that when your right hand is doing something, don't let your left hand know about it. We only want to give to those people who will sing our praises. But the same people who sing your praises today can come and turn against you tomorrow. But why don't you give to the one that can pick you from the miry clay? We sing Wangi Tatal. Wangi. Begal. 
Wangi susal. Wangi begal. The one who can take you from the lowest of the lowest and make you to dine with kings and princes. The one who made Joseph from being a prisoner in one house to being a prime minister. But we want to show off to people who will only dance to your tunes when they know that you have money. The moment you don't have any money, I do we um what is this guy that who was this guy that won lottery and then became poor again? I think it was Kain Bao's um, boyfriend or something like that. Was Mang, thank you. He was renting Lamborghinis. He rented a penthouse in Santin and was just partying and partying. Where do you think he lives now? Behind his grandmother's house in Soweto, in Emokoko. He won millions. Was it not a case against government? Something like that. It was a case against government. In Nigeria, they will say such people have money misrule. As in, money just went to the wrong hands. How many franchises could he have bought? How many families could he be feeding them? The owners of the Lamborghini is collected now. He had no penny to his name when he went back to his grandmother's house and so it. Can God really trust you with wealth? I want you to ask yourself that question. Because you may have been asking God, ah God, when you give me those millions, when I become a millionaire, ha, I will do this. Pastor Mrs. was saying it last week. I will when I just give me that car, I will be taking people to church. How many people did you bring to church this morning? Just give me that house. I will I will be hosting people from church. How many people from church have you hosted? When we are asking for things, we know ah, it's so good to make a vow. But you come back to fulfill your vow. The moment that money comes in, that's when we will remember all the bills. Why not settle the one who has blessed you first so that he will bless the remaining? I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So in preparation for next week, let us bring gifts. Um, we sisters will meet after the service so that we can plan properly on how we will celebrate our mother in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we rise to our feet? With Jesus' joy in our hearts, let us welcome our Father in the house. Hallelujah. Let's welcome the Lord. Hallelujah. And I please have your seat. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, in the days of his power, his people shall be willing. I see the willingness this morning. Amen. I see you in different shapes, different, uh, better. I see you better Amen. than I left you. So I want to appreciate you all for holding forth while I was away. Let's put our hands. Amen. It shows this church can run without me. Amen. Amen. And it puts me in my place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you that have been doing it to make it better. Hallelujah. Amen. Make it better. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Actually, I know that the energy and the ability to do it better will come to you after the summer. In the name of Jesus. Or so doing the sermon and everything to make the church better, to make your life better, to make everything better will come to you. In the name of Jesus. So once again, I want to appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, How has it been for three weeks? We missed you. Okay, thank you. I missed you too. I bring you greetings from Westmoreland in Jamaica, Montego Bay in Jamaica, 
Should I count more? I've been all over there. And, uh, okay, um, that is in Jamaica. And the Spanish town in Jamaica, the churches that were there, they were wonderful. I preached in two of them. Though I try, I avoided as much as possible preaching. In this. I minister to a lot of people. About 3,500 patients came. A lot of people came from Nigeria. I saw things that are much better than ever before. This mission was quite unique. And uh, also, there's something very unique that I saw that touched my heart. Amen? Amen. I come from a town called Abel Buta. And uh, I've read about the town Abel Buta also in Jamaica. <laughs> so, but I was privileged this time around to be there. Be careful of what you dream about or what you say you will be. One day you will realize it. I was in the background reading the story of uh, the history of a book big like this called The History of the Yorubas. And it was written by a white man around 1912. 1912, 1913. C not C.S. Lewis. I was reading that book big. And I heard about the Abel Buta thing there in the revised version of it. I said I would be there. And unfortunately, I got there. What thrilled me about the place was this. The distance that people are taking from one coast to the other. And they were eventually settled down there. The distance was too much. In such a way that naturally, it's impossible to come back. It's impossible, very impossible to come back to their roots. But yet, they carry something on their inside ah. that reminded them of their roots. Mm. And they kept it on till this day that I even discovered them. Mm. Are you with me? Yes. It really touched me so much. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. And I thank you for the preparation for my wife's birthday. Um, she said she doesn't want to do things, but I can see that mm. things are on and I'm happy. I'm also happy. I'm very happy. Thank you so much. Amen. You will be celebrated in Jesus' name. Amen. Your turn will come. Amen. The whole world will stand up for Amen. you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of these things, or the opportunities that we see, are seeds into your own greatness. And I see that greatness all over. Amen. I see it all over. Amen. I see your seeds being multiplied. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, by the grace of God, within the next 30 minutes, I want to lead us into an open secret of productivity in the kingdom of God. An open secret is an open one. It's an open secret of increase. Open secret of getting results. Open secret of the supernatural, of what we are, who we are in Christ in the kingdom of God. We know we are great. How do we translate that greatness into physical materiality? Because I, I see you moving from one level of finances to another in the name of Jesus. I see you operating in millions. I see you operating in billions of dollars, of rands, of different currencies of the world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What man says is impossible. I see you operating in it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I see God's dream. God's purpose and desire. Coming to fulfillment in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What do I see? I see talents. Plan and purposes of God. Coming into expression. Fruition. This time, in the name of Jesus. Amen. It doesn't take a whole town to make a change. It takes only one individual that decides, that made up his, could make up his mind to follow God, to change things. Are you with me? What do I see in this church? I see this church growing into thousands, established for life, even for generations coming to come, in the name of Jesus. I see, even when all of us, after 100 years, 
200 years, 300 years have gone. Children coming after us, remembering the legacy that we leave for them. Are you getting me? And then also giving people life. Amen. Amen. This morning, like I said again, I want to lead you into an open secret in the kingdom. Luke chapter 6. The last four verses. Glory to God. And I take it in a new dimension this morning. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, as in all things, we are part of you. We look up to you. We depend on you. We are here for you this morning. Father, we receive an opening of our eyes of understanding. Ears to hear. Mind to see clearly of your word. That people's life will be transformed this morning. Marriages will be transformed. Professional lives will be transformed. In the name of Jesus. We receive manna from heaven like never before, that we will go out of here and men and women will see that we have an encounter with you. Encounter with you is what we desire this morning. Thank you ahead of time for giving us. We give you praise for an encounter with life. We give you praise for an encounter with God, with yourself this morning, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you because we are full of life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And if you are alive, say amen. 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 Say this with me. I'm full of God. Full of the God. fullness of God dwells in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say it convincingly. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is God and the solution that he has given me than the problems, than the problems, than the trials, than the challenges that are out there. I have the life of God. I am a solution provider. I am a light. I am a light to this generation, to this world. I'm full of life. And I go out this morning with that life radiating from me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter 6. I said the last four verses. Let's see. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. Build your house on the rock. Build your house on the rock. An exposition into the open secret of productivity in the kingdom. Open secret into healing, into turning your financial situation around into handling projects, getting things done by the Spirit in the kingdom of God. And why call ye me Lord? Let's read together from verse 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. 48, please. Let's read. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Upon a rock. 49. But he that heareth 
and do it not. It's like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Your life will not be ruined in Jesus' name. Your life will not be ruined in Jesus' name. Houses that you built will not be ruined in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said some important things which I want you to see over here. He said, why call ye me Lord, 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 and do not the things which I say? Another translation of this verse says, why do you call me Lord? But don't do what I tell you. Mm. Who has a different one? I'm sure. So why do you call me Lord? But don't do what I tell you. The essence of lordship is obedience. The essence of the lordship of Jesus is obedience to what he says. And it's in the what he says that the secret of productivity is. Production, increase, healing, transformation of life, change of our carnal nature, pro uh, having abundance to fulfill what God called us to do, plan and purposes of God, is based on one thing, which is like what he did in Genesis. Being built on a rock. Being built on a rock. Are you getting me? Being built on a rock. And that rock, that rock is not the church. That rock is not a doctrine. That rock is not just a hanging word, but that rock is Christ. According to Isaiah 28, hello, I mean Matthew 16, 18. Amen. Amen. Why call ye me Lord and do not the thing that I say? If we look at another place, Matthew chapter 7, in verse 21 to 27. When you get home, read it. He talks about how he will turn some people away. Because they say he's Lord, 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 but yet they don't hear what he says. But those are not the things that I want to talk to you about this morning. Look, we are not into disobedience of what God says. We are into obedience. Are you with me? But he says something in verse 47, which is very clear. He says, unto what will I liken? We'll, we'll keep going back. Oh, huh. look at it. And this I say to you that you are Peter. I know. All right, leave that at 47. We'll come to it one by one. Let me just go. Are you with me? Now, when you look at Matthew 7, in verse 21 to 27, it's another beautiful rendering of that uh, same passage where Jesus was talking in Luke chapter 6. The difference between Matthew and Luke is one word, digging deep which you will see later. You understand in verse 47 here. Yeah. He said, I will show you what it is like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and following it. What is the secret that men are running around for? It's just one word. Hearing and doing what God said. The building upon the rock that we are talking is hearing and doing what Christ said inside of us. Hello? What Christ said. It is not an old thing that was written down. Just any writing. Are you with me? But it's a live thing that is happening on our inside now. Am I communicating? Yes. It's a, a life on the moment thing. If you will get this early in life, you will start seeing things that men don't see. 
The secret between men that are listed in Hebrews chapter 11 and every other people that existed in their generation was their ability to hear from God and do what God said. Can you hear? Can you remember a man called Noah? Yeah. What happened to Noah? God told him that there was going to be rain, a flood, when it has never rained before, ah. when it has never seen that it's going to be, and yet he moved. Everybody say he moved. He moved. He heard, and then he moved. Mm. He started preparing an ark. Mm. People that listened to him, they got saved. People that did not, they perished. And time, according to Hebrew, will tell me, will not, time will not permit us to start going through them one by one. Listening, looking at the life of David, looking at the life of Jephthah, looking at the life of uh, Samuel, looking at the life of Gideon, looking at the life of Sarah, Abraham, Isaac, even Ishmael's mother, looking at the life of Joseph, looking at our heroes, our ancestors, there's one thing that characterizes them. They built their life on a rock. That rock was not seen. Are you with me? It's the rock, the same rock that follows them. It's the same rock that brings waters for them. But that rock is not a physical rock somewhere in the wilderness of Egypt where we cannot lay hands on it, or where we cannot touch it, where he's not moved by our feelings, where he doesn't know what is going on in our life. That rock has come to stay on your inside right now. And that is the essence of Christianity. That is the essence of living. That Christ that is in you is the hope of glory. Is the hope of glory. Oh, if men will hear and do what he says, then their life will be like this. They listen to my teaching, they listen to my instruction, they listen to my nudgings, they listen to my direction. Amen. Amen. Then verse 48, please. Verse 48. Let's be fast. I don't want to tell long. Are you getting it this morning? <laughs> 48. Okay, you have your Bible. Yes. yes. Why they are grappling with that? That shows we miss David. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, it's on the board. Yes, let me stay here. So that he said he's like a man which built an house and did deal. Uh -huh, this is where I am coming. He is like a man which built an house and did deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Get that phrase right. He's like a man. The man that comes to Jesus is born again. He goes to church. And he is doing the teaching. Even when others are not doing it. Yeah. I'd like to add that phrase. Because the devil, one of the things that the devil will do is a strategy. For every attempt of the devil, is a, there are strategies to deviate you. To move you away from hearing from that rock, yeah. from building on that rock. Anything that will want to make you to come to the word of God, to hear the word of God, the devil will make it, make sure he brings it in your mm. way. Either he gives you a job that doesn't allow you to study the Bible. Mm. Because that's where you have encounter with the rock. Mm. Or he gives you friends that will, it's the time that you really want to study, to hear, to pray. The time that you really need to go home to connect with your source because the sustenance of everything comes from its source. Are you with me? The time that you need to be sustained, to be given life, 
That's when they will call you. That's when they will come and fellowship. And you will start chatting about something that is irrelevant. Mm. A good common one that we even buy with our money right now is the social media. There's nothing as distracting as the social media. Are you with me? Yes, it's good to be used, find the positive ways of using it to influence human life. We don't hear reactions of the apostles. We hear about acts of the apostles. Acts of the apostles. Doings of the apostles. Not reaction to news. Reaction to things. We are living now in an age where we react to environment. We are not brought up to be listening to news. We should get news from our inside. We hear and do. One of the things that I found out that I've deviated so much from, you understand, was that when I started, when I started, when things are fine, I made some mistakes. And it's just recently I found out strong. You understand? I, I made a lot, not even strong. Well, if you don't, I know some of you never made. You understand? I will learn from you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. One of it is this. Whenever God gives me a vision or an idea or something to do for him concerning my life, the first thing which I have also trained us in this space to look for is two words or three scriptures that support that thing. If you can get two or three scriptures that proves that thing for you on the physical, it's not like God didn't tell you. It's not like God didn't show you. Do you understand? But you need those physical things to base it upon. Because every other thing in life will change. Yeah. Man will change. Yeah. The economy will change. Uh, temperature, when God was telling you, when you have those goose bombs, will change. Vision, everything will change. But those words will never change. I find out that I have left it and I'm now following man's idea. Do you understand? And creativity of God does not follow man's plan. Yeah. That is why we look, we are different yeah. from others. Are you getting me? Yeah. The house that God tells you to build mm. is in the Bible. Yes. <laughs> the money you are looking for is in the Bible. The fulfillment of destiny that you are looking for is in the Bible, not outside of you. Everything that you need in life is in the Bible. Ability to accomplish it is in the Bible. It looks like it cannot be done. It will not be done. Or there is no way it will come to pass. But with God, all things are possible. For with God, all things are possible. If he can say it, if God can say it, if God can say it, that is all. And that is the secret to creativity right from the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, God said, He needed a garden. Instead of man will look for seed, he will look for plant, fork, garden, and men to cultivate it. And this thing, and water, and this. Yes, he put us here as a job to tend that garden. Are you getting me? Yes, but when he needed a garden, he said, Let there be light. Let there be plants. Let there be everything. And to maintain that garden, he put man there mm. to cultivate it, to continue doing that. But we men are created in his image. Yes. We are, a, we are created to have dominion like him, to create like him, to extend his ministry, not to be the other way around. Ah. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that means we are expected to create by saying what he said. By focusing on what he said. Brethren, time has come when we have to change this concept in the body of Christ that someone has been in Christianity for 40 years, for 30 years, for 20 years, and you can't see it in their life. Are you with me? It is because, no any other thing, it is because the life has not been built on the rock. Simple. On the rock. 
and it's not rock of theology, not rock of religion, socialism, uh, psychology, rock of modern things that we hear. But the a new age, but the rock of the world, the rock of the world. Times will come in life when you don't know in the physical how you will move across that barrier. It looks like an imposing barrier. I've been there in life. When it looks like I will not graduate, my average score was 45. And uh, we need 50. You must pass it. You must pass all the exam before you graduate. You must have, even if you have something they call a medical school, Duncan, Duncan line. <laughs> There's a Duncan here. That Duncan line, that guy who was Duncan, he, a real person, it's true. He was in the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. He got 50, 50, 50. Medicine, 50. Surgery, 50. PSM, 50. Preventive and social medicine, 50. Did he pass or not? He passed. He passed. Even if you're on Duncan line. So they started calling that thing Duncan line. But I was 45. <laughs> Below Duncan line. That means all energy. And you see, Cumulative effort is what you use. Cumulative text that you have marked, the marks that you have had before, is what you use to score simply in final exam. That you don't need to labor so much. Just like in life. Are you getting me? You will have been doing it, practicing it over and over, over and over. Going to class, doing the test that you're supposed to do, doing assignment. But you see, like you too, I was like you. I won't do the assignment. I won't. You understand? I, I, I would have even gone from Ibadan, from Pretoria, where I was schooling, let's say Pretoria, I would have gone to Western Cape, do business, go play, go, go after gospel. You understand? A balance to some things. I won't talk about that now. But I would have done some zeal without knowledge. So, but when it comes to this, I came, I felt on my knees, Father God, help. I remember Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. He said, whatsoever you believe, he said, ask, it shall be given. Seek, it shall be No, it shall be The door shall be opened unto you. In the next verse, he said, because everybody that asks, they receive. Those things, they look so simple. But what makes difference in life are those simple, simple, small things. They make tremendous change. I based on another one, Psalm 27 in verse 13, that uh, because I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, that I have believed my hope. See, I would have fainted. And it is true. I would have fainted. Or except that I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Everything law was like this against me. I will walk like this. As a matter of fact, uh, some brethren will see me. Ah, ah. It's like I'm carrying a load. You know, you've been in situations where people don't know. You're not physically carrying anything. But what you are carrying is more than a hole. It's more than a rock. You understand? There's a bill that you have to pay for this. Or three days. And you have to. You are walking like you are dragging. And people will be wondering what is happening to you. They're not in your shoes. You understand? They don't say, what is this? But I found those scriptures, and to God be the glory today, the rest is history. It's history. You've been there too. Where you have to go and kneel down before God and pray, Father, if you don't help me, my life is gone. When men will tell you that it's impossible, it cannot be done, you can't get there, you, we can't give you. And God will still tell you, I will give you. Ah. That telling is the rock I'm talking about. <laughs> that ability to hear that word and then respond is what I am telling you this morning. It's an open secret. What I'm talking about is something that you have done over and over and you will still do over and over. One of the key secrets in the life of Moses, we still go back to Luke chapter 6, about 7 to 14. Whenever Moses encountered a problem, 
He will see the face of God. Shall I? What shall I do? He looked at the point. You see, before he was not asking him. He was doing it too, like each and every one of us. We think we can do it. You understand me? You see, a point comes, maybe it's generally the life of people. Oh my God. Okay, I'll be fast. <laughs> okay, Moses taught, Moses, the key in the life. What's that? Oh, yeah. Don't be fast. Okay. Thank you. A key in the life of Moses is that he always hear from God. And that is what he, that is what building a house on a rock is all about. Jesus, when he was speaking in this space, he was giving a figurative explanation. It's a parable. In the Greek, let me show you something. The word build and house, they almost come from the same word. The one that says build, it says is the Greek word is oiko domio. To be a house builder. That is to construct. To construct figuratively. And also it means to edify, to build, or the act of building. And it's been used about 39 times in the Bible. The other one is the house itself. You understand? The first one is what? Oiko to meal. That is the building. The house itself is Oikia. <laughs> Hello? Are you there? Yes. Sir. It's like, what are you? <laughs> Oiko to meal, Oikia. House building. <laughs> That's your language. It sounds like Alia. Oh, praise God. <laughs> praise God. It means proper residence. But usually and abode, literally or figuratively, and by implication, a family, mm. a home, a household. What this is saying is a life. Mm. Are you getting me? Our life is compared, our destinies, our assignments on earth is compared to building a house. Two, three things very important in building a house, building our lives. Number one, house is built with a vision. It's built twice. I wish you can write it down. Your life is lived twice. In the spirit, you have seen it first with a plan. And then you come out physically and do it. Number, number two, the, the first one is that you, you, it's built with a plan. It's built twice. And you have a scripture for it. You will help me also with this. When you get home, go and put scriptures and tie them. Who among you wants to build a tower that will not, that will not, that will not, first of all, sit down and count the cost, whether he had enough to do it or not? Or it's like somebody that wants to go and face an army. That will not first call, think, well, do I have enough soldiers to fight this guy? Or I go and seek for a way of reconciling. In all cases, that project is still being done. Mm. Whether you have enough resources or you don't have enough resources, that you have to go and beg your enemy. Mm. Or go and seek peace, peace with your enemy. But the battle will still be fought. Are you getting me? A house is being built with a vision. The Bible says by vision the house is built. And number three, the contents of a house are filled in with wisdom. I will throw it together. Our lives should not be built abstractly. We are destined, we are supposed to be living life on purpose. Not as the day comes. It is as it is written. Yes. Our life is supposed not to come like as it comes. It's supposed to be after a pattern, after an order. A plan that we get from God. A plan that we get from his books. And let me be 
If, let me at this point tell you something. There is nothing God wants you to do, achieve in life, that you will not be able to get from the book you are holding down to. Yes, sir. Hello? Bye -bye. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Listen to me. Children is in that Bible. Mm -hmm. The ability of Sarah to conceive, even when the husband cannot perform, Abraham, after 25 years, is in the word that God spoke to them. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. The ability to achieve. The open secret that I'm talking about is in the word that God gave you. It's in the word that God says. It's in the word that God says. It's in the word that God says. You see, traditionally, we've taken it to, to mean so many things. To mean so many things. Do you understand? Traditionally, we say, yes, the hearers of the word, uh, they, they uh, are not hearers alone. Yes, it is true. But it goes deeper than that. It's not just uh, being obedient. Because you are not after the law. We are not created to just be obeying, obeying, obeying. We are created to do, to do, to do. And it is in the doing, in making it happen, that results come. Do you get the difference? We are not just created to obey. Especially in the New Testament. Are you with me? Yeah, obey, obey, obey. Mm -hmm. We are going beyond obeying. It is do. We, we take it like this, like scripture, and go and do it. We do it. You see, that thing that holds you back from doing those scriptures, like you are acting a script, is what is holding you back from destiny. Mm. What is controlling your life is not outside of you. All the forces are on your inside. Uh. In the spirit. Are you getting me this morning? Have a new approach to life. Have a new, a refreshing approach to getting results in life. What is God saying? He will give you a plan. And by the way, God does not want us to live our life in just a small size quantity dream. And that little vision that you have right now. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Dream bigger than you can ever achieve. Because as far as you can see, God will give you. You cannot dream bigger than God. You cannot dream a dreams enough that God cannot achieve. Mm. And as a matter of fact, you are not yet dreaming the kind of dream that God wants. Because without dreams, things don't happen. Are you with me? Somebody said dream come true. And in this place in America, I was in Texas. First time I would come out of the airport, I've been there before that I have to stay and um, trans. Transit. I've been there several times, taking one plane to the other. I love the, I love the airport. The airport of the state is bigger, much more bigger than so many airports of many countries in Africa. Texas is bigger than so many countries in Africa. As a matter of fact, the state of yeah. Texas. Is the one of the yes, the state of Texas is two thirds of Nigeria. Two third of Nigeria in size. Yes. Two third of Nigeria. Wow. And population less than. Much, much less. I was outside. I saw a conference center that a general overseer was scheduled, or they are planning to schedule a meeting <coughs> with. I opened my mouth and said, Lord. What we call big is small in some other places. Are you with me? All those things are relative. Until you get to where you are staying, you are a world-class player. Men will not come and seek your wisdom. 
we start, we need to start dreaming, dreaming, having vision, seeing ourselves like Solomon in your little town, operating in wisdom that people will come and say, how is this going to happen? How is this happening? Are you with me? Am I talking to somebody this morning? Yes, and then, men will be attracted to you. Catch fire for God. Be burning for God. And you will see people come to your light. Mm. This mediocre thing that we see around, mm. we not draw anybody to Christ. Mm. We not. But when you get results that are outstanding, that is big enough to catch attention. Men will say, I, I want to know your God. Mm. And it's a natural, simple thing. Mm. Without vision, you won't be able to do it. Mm. Dream big. Dream big. The same hearing, the same hearing and doing the word of God that makes you build a house will complete it. Mm. He that has started a good work. Hello. Yes. He that has started we do what? Brother, look at me. I see your destiny being fulfilled. Amen. I see purpose of God in your life accomplished. Amen. Do you see? I see marriage turn around. I see destinies fulfilled. Amen. I see children happening for God. I see children growing up in the way of God. Destiny, I mean, award-winning children. Children that bring glory home. Not at eight. Children that we help others to get out of prison, both spiritual and physical. Hey, brethren, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Are you with me? We have to be very careful with what we are building and what we are raising now. Because people are taking Bible out of school and everything and they are allowing it in prison. Are you with me? It is because they have not read the Bible while they are in school. That's why they get to prison. Are you with me? Both physical prison and spiritual prison is only people that hear and do the word of God that can bring people out of them. Are you getting me this morning? Jesus himself said, Please go home and God will expand this scripture in your heart. Go home and meditate on these three scriptures or four more. He said, it's like a person building a house. The house you are building is your life. The house you are building is your destiny. And you have an opportunity to do what? To build it. Mm. You have opportunity as long as life is to build it. You have opportunity to build your financial yeah. empire. You have opportunity to build your professional life. You have, uh, you have an opportunity to build your marriage. Mm. You have an opportunity to build your spiritual life. You have the opportunity now. He says, I will, he says, I will like him, like a person building a house. Who digs deep? The deep that we are talking about is the deep within here. Confession of Jesus has been, look at Peter. Jesus said something to Peter. When other people say a lot of things, he said, who do you say I am? <laughs> Others call me Confucianist. Others say they are God's work. Others say it's a white man religion. Uh, so people say, it's not, uh, Jesus is not for us this day. I don't know this question about this God or this church thing, that the age of church is over. But what are you saying? And then Peter opened his mouth and said, you are the Christ. You are Jesus, the Christ. You, Jesus, you are the Christ we are expecting, the son of the living God, who will redeem us, who will save us, who will do everything. He said, what are you saying? You have to dig deep on your inside. What are you saying? Are you getting me? You have to dig deep on your inside. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
For with the heart, you believe in the building of your heart, of your house. You hear, you hear, you hear with a physical heart. You hear with a physical ear. You hear over and over, over and over. And then you believe and say, I fulfill destiny. My children will turn out for me. Uh, we, by his stripes, I am healed. Cancer is nothing before God. Diabetes is ill. I am free of all these diseases. I cannot, I will never fail another day in my life. I will never be broke another day in my life. Yes, I've made mistakes in the past, but my past is back. For I'm in Christ Jesus. I am a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. I, I am a giver. I have seed to sow. I have seed to sow. I have seed to sow. I have plenty of seed to sow. In life, the first seed that you need to get is the seed of the world. The seed of the world. Are you getting me? Do you know that our actions tell us what we believe? Yeah. Sit down and think about it. Why call me Lord, Lord, Lord? I do not believe what I'm saying. We live in a world where we have to encourage one another every day. Because the, we were buffeted by negative things that will tell you it cannot happen. Ah. God has saved you in years past. He will not save you again. God has healed you before. He cannot heal you. He delivered you from that trouble. No, no. But the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro upon the earth, seeking for whom he will deliver, who he will answer their prayers. Is is looking for people that will hold on to him and he will deliver them. And the Bible says, many, not one, not two, are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord God Who deliver them? The mechanism of that deliverance is hearing and doing. The mechanism, the process of that deliverance is hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Hearing and doing his word. Hearing and doing his word. Hearing and doing his word in your finances. Hearing and doing his word in your marriage. Hearing and doing his word. You will feel, look, everything. The Bible talks about the stone. The, the, look, look at it. The foundation on the solid rock. You understand? You remember he said, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will do. Upon this hearing on your internet and inner cons- con- persuasion will I build my hand. Abraham was, until Abraham was fully persuaded, Isaac did not come. Until Noah was fully persuaded and he started taking action, the rain did not come. Are you with me? Look at the life of Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego. Full persuasion in a foreign land of what they know, what they believe, what God said, is what brought signs and wonders into their life. You are meant to live by signs and wonders. Are you with me? And at a young age, as Esther, Full persuasion on the word of God. Full persuasion. I'm cutting a lot of things short. I'm jumping in. But God will expand it in your heart. He said, when the flood waters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it is well well built. built. Hallelujah. Because it is well built. Because you are building on the world. Verse 49, quickly. The last one. You see, now... The person that hears and does not do, which is what is common, are you with me? Yes, we see a lot of people, they don't do. You see, the, uh, the one that hears it and do it not, it's like a man. Listen, the whole thing that Jesus was talking about is about, is about a man or a woman. It's about a woman being. Are you with me? That without a foundation build a house upon the earth. Many of us know that we should not build a house without a foundation. Mm. But spiritually, we're building. Mm. People are building without foundation. Mm. Are you getting it? Against which the stream did be. It's not like the streams or wind, the flood will not come. The same flood that beats this house is the same flood that beat the other one. One was standing, the other was not. Because it was built on inner persuasion that what God said will come to pass. You held on to hope. You hold on to dream. You hold on to what he said. Everything that he said to you that he will do. Everything that he said to you that he will do. He will do it. Amen. As he said, 
It's not a man that you will lie. That small, small conviction, that small, small word that you call. Many of us think we cannot hear from God. Can your children hear from you? Yes. If your children can hear from you, you can hear from God. Yeah. You are not far from God. Are you with me? Yes. Please, look, look at me, look at me. Your ability to hear from God is better than any other person. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And it is when you do that thing in your innermost being. Let's take our marriage. Let's take our marriage, for example. Hearing and doing. Your wife will say things that you will feel like slapping her. Ordinary people will slap their wife or they will carry their bag and move out of that house. But as a person that has called him Lord, what did he say? Forgive. Right? Love endures all things. The flames, the flood, the streams did beat. It's not as if the streams will not beat. Do you think what weapon do you think the devil is using if the streams is not beating? Mm. The devil does not want your house to stand. Yes. He wants the house to fall. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So that thing, that anger will be in you. But instead of raising your hand against your wife, let the world control that hand. Amen. You did it like... <laughs> Are you with me? You may not even move. Hey, I go. I bless you. In my place, people. You see, people, especially all these little, little emotional things. The control of your life is not outside of you. When you let it be outside of you, men will start taking you as ordinary beings. Mm. People will provoke you to anger. Yeah. They will set it. Evil situation. Men that you have not seen. Yeah. This will say that you say that he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Report this that he said that. Uh, anyway. Yesterday something happened. Old trick that arm, uh, arm robbers use. I was with very mind. We went to town. You understand? To so this, to this place that uh, park, and uh, we park. I, I was waiting. I was deep in thought, concentrating on what I'm doing. Then this guy came, knock, 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 knock on the window. I should come and see the flat tire mm. at the back. Oh. Come and see it, that something is happening. You know that kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Why can you say that? Because you have known, no. yeah. or you see people that yeah. it happened to. But if I go out ah. and look at it, they open the door. Before I come back, my phone, the uh, contents of the car is gone. Are you with me? I look at the car. And I cannot, I said something that I can't, even if I don't know, because it looks so real. Mm. You understand? I have prayed. This is where prayer comes in. Mm. If you will travel in prayer, you will prevail in life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I did not even realize it. The guy kept telling, go, 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 nothing. I was trying to open and see. I started the car. So see. Then, inside of me, I heard that, no, he wants to rob you. Oh, and I looked at it. When he now saw that I was bold, I was not even listening to him or something, he ran away. It was then that I saw that two other guys have gone. And I put, a, I, I kept a lot of things on the seat. My cell phone, of course, I was playing with it. I would have just left it on the phone, uh, uh, on the dashboard, and go and look at that thing. The distraction would have come. It would have made me angry, distracted me. What is distracting you from the purpose of God? What is making you angry? What is driving you away from vision? From the plans that God has already given you? What is telling you? in order to rob you of your blessings, that the world won't work. Build your house. Build your life upon the rock. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Yes, Let's stand up on our feet. Just lift up your hand. Grace, Father. Grace to build like never before. I receive of you. Open your mouth and begin to pray.
Grace. Grace to build my life, to build my career, to build my profession. The stream is beating. We are focusing on the stream. The pain is there. Healing has not come. The house is not yet completed. But then, don't look at that problem. Don't look at the court cases. Don't look at the bills. Don't look at the negatives. Don't look at what is working against you. It will look like you don't know how to do. It will look like something is wrong about you. Everything is wrong about the world. Jesus made you right. You can never be wrong in life. Don't join the enemy to work against yourself. You can never be wrong in life. You can never be wrong in life. You can never be wrong in life. Because the righteousness of God has been given to you as a gift. Grace to build like never before. Father, I receive ability to build like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my finances, my financial life. I may have missed it. Wherever I am, cause correct now. Lord, cause correction. Father, help me. My children, back home. In the name of Jesus. Lord, my children, let them come in the way so that their foundation, the foundation will be firm. They are building well. In the mighty name of Jesus, open your mouth, pray in the spirit, pray in understanding concerning it. You don't know how it will come to pass, but thank him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Where money will come from, he will get it. He will get it. Remember, at a point, at a point, he sent Peter to open the mouth of a fish. And money came. Remember, they toiled overnight. But at a point, he said, don't toil that side. Don't walk that side. Go on the other side. Healing comes. Money comes. Deliverance comes. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and just thank you. Thank you for the word. Thank you that you are a, not only a hearer, but you are a hearer and a doer of the word. The Bible says it's the one who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Be do of your good pleasure. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. If you're giving your tithes, can you come forward quickly? So that Pastor can pray for you. Remember the word that we came today that we can God trust you with his finances. It is wrong. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the privilege and opportunity to give tithes to you. Lord, I ask, according to your word, that the effect of giving tithes will be seen in the life of this world. Amen. Hearing and doing your word of finances will be evidenced in their life. Amen financial transformation. Amen. Open the windows of heaven. Amen. Open doors of heaven Amen. unto greater things in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your life will be like a delightful guy. Men will keep you. Amen. Women will keep you. you. Doors will be open for you where you don't even expect Amen. it. Rain will be upon your dry places. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your life will be so wet and fruitful. And you will produce forth in the name of Jesus. We we'll receive your tithe in Jesus' name. We we'll receive your tithe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to give your time, your offering cheerfully this morning. I know you do it regularly. But because in obedience to the word of God, I love the chef. You can imagine what will happen to you when God loves you. I want you to give your offering with a difference this morning. Please rise to your feet and let's give our offering. Amen.
Thank you, Father God. Thank you because your word concerning giving comes to pass in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This week, thank you for doors that will be opened up to us. That money will come to us from expected and unexpected sources. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for ministry angels that have been sent forth on our behalf. Causing men to favor us this week. Causing men to give unto us this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me two minutes. Please sit down before you go. <clears throat> Please, you know that exactly when we are having the naming ceremony. Please, the Muiwa and Misola Bamiche, they will be doing their naming ceremony here. And others will be coming. It's also an evangelistic tool. But briefly, I want to talk to you about making disciples of all nations. Any country, any organization, any human being that lives only for himself and does not give back to other things will soon perish. How is your Christian life? Is it only to yourself? Who are you bringing to the Lord? Bring people to the Lord. Be fruitful. Be fruitful in the Lord. Invite people to church. It's a collaborative thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus said, I give you all power in heaven and earth to do what? So that you go and teach all people, making disciples of all nations, teaching and showing them all what I have done in your life, telling them what he has done. Christianity is not meant to be lived by only you. Are you getting me? Please preach to others, bring others to Christ. Amen. Who is going, I'm, I'm going to break this now. One will, one will be reaching the other. One reach one. You understand? Each one will reach one. will reach the other. Sir. Amen. Are you with me? You're going to bring somebody to church. We're going to make this church up. If this church is going to change in size, in quality and quantity, it's going to be me and you. You are inviting somebody to church next week. You can invite not one, you can invite two. Even if you can do ten, are you with me? We make it happen. Things are made to happen in life. I'm going to ask you one by one. And you're going to make a covenant with God. Who is going to invite people to church? Especially people that don't, are not Christian. They are not touched. Are you with me? Don't take another man's sheep. We are not sheep stealers. Or people that don't go to church. Amen. You're going to, okay, starting from the back, I'm going to be asking you, are you going to invite people to church? One, eh? Yes, one. I'm starting with you, uh, Felicia. Yes, I'll invite. Eh? Hello? 
Please, I want that commitment fast so that we go. We are leaving, huh? Eh? I want you to let everybody hear. Yes, sir. No, no, I hear you. Thanks. Hello. Yebo. This one. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Everybody. Are we going to do the work of an evangelist next week? Are we going to make our spiritual life better than before? You see, one of the things that this thing does is that it beautifies your life. It makes your life fruitful. You understand? The expectation of the Father is that we produce yearly, annually. Are you with me? Jesus went to that fruit tree. He said, I will cut it down. Then the watchman, the gate, the, 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 the garden keeper said, no, give it another one year. Are you with me? God expects increase in our life every year. Amen. So make it happen. Bring it up. Will you do? Yes, sir. Will you do? Yes, Man of God? You. Will you do? Yes, sir. You're not talking. Ah. Let me stand with you. Will you do? Yes, sir. Man of God? Yes, Will you do? No, don't try. You do. Are you with me? Jimo? Yes. Hello? Hello? Don't run away because of it. You understand? But I want you to see the power of making things happen. Leaders already. You're making things happen. Felicia? Hmm? Yes, sir. Hello? Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus. The love of God. And the Do you understand? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Christianity, everything that we teach and preach here is not meant to be practiced here. It's meant to be practiced here. Um, by one o'clock, we are starting another service and we are going to eat and drink and name the child and then we go home. This best reserve, um, where is the uh, wife? We need praise. Please talk with the ushers so that we will reserve some places for. Apart from our pastors, um, the pastors that will be coming, the father and mother of the couple, where the couple will sit, please be able to organize. Thank you.